All right. Hello and welcome everybody to the first of hopefully many more Q&As. My name is Fatty Mansi, your personal coach. I'm the owner of Real Results Fitness and author of 24 Ways Fitness Has Deceived You and The Real Solutions to Them. YouTube channel here, obviously. Uh, my website is realresultsfitness.org, O-R-G. Instagram is Real Results, F-T-N-S, and Facebook, Real Results Fitness 24. Um, I have with me today, Stephen Correa. Uh, Stephen you. is a strength and conditioning coach. Uh, he has a Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Management, and he's the owner of Twin Anchors Fitness. Uh, you can find him at twinanchorsfitness.com, and his Instagram is S underscore Correa, C-O-R-R-E-A, Jr. Uh, I'll have all of our links and all of our information down below in the description. I reached out to Stephen and I asked him a question, a few of his clients to ask us some questions. Uh, some are general health-based questions and some are strength-based. And since Stephen works primarily with strength and conditioning clients, and I work more with clients that are in the realm of fat loss and muscle building, good opportunity for us to, for us and our clients and uh, whoever else is out there watching us to get some perspective from both sides of us. Um, so some answers we might agree on, some not so much, and uh, hopefully we could all learn something from these set of questions. So without further ado, uh, we're gonna get right into some of the questions. And the first is a two-part question that goes hand in hand. First question is, how does the muscle building and getting stronger process work? And how can I gain make, how can I make gains faster? Uh, so that's a, good, that's a good question. I mean, it's one I always get, but uh, you know, I'll let you start this off since uh, I think it's more of your realm to start with. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, for me, the, the short answer, I guess, is just busting your ass in the gym, right? <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, just that's it. I'm done with that. No. Um, uh, muscle building, it's, it's a really slow process. And through social media, and particularly like Instagram and magazines always have these amazing advertisements. Uh, you see someone scrawny going from like 130 pounds to... 185 chiseled and, and ready to, uh, to win a contest in, in 12 weeks, you know? And, uh, or quite the opposite, someone that's maybe obese and, and then they're, they get down, they're shredded in, in 12 weeks. And a lot of these things, um, you, you gotta remember, most of these people are trying to sell you something at the end of the day. Uh, there's always Matt, um, uh, ads in these magazines like a fat burning pill or uh, if anybody's watched there's a documentary called bigger faster stronger some of these before and after pictures are done in the same exact day uh, so that's one thing that you have to remember before I go into kind of the the muscle building process but um, I'm a strong proponent in tracking your progress uh, you don't have to track everything uh, unless you want to, that's completely up to you. Uh, but I always track my big movements, my compound movements, um, bench, squats, rows, deadlifts, uh, even like weighted pull-ups or heavy dips. I like to track those just because those are multi-joint movements. And you're going to incorporate more muscles. And the by incorporating more muscles, you're going to make that muscle stronger. And by getting stronger, you're going to make gains faster. Um, if, you know, if you're going to be, if you're benching, uh, if you're doing like a dumbbell bench press and you're doing 25, 30 pounds and, and you've been doing that for the last six weeks and squatting the same weight for the past like six weeks and whatnot, and you're questioning yourself or or the program or whatever it is and why you're not gaining muscle you're not gaining size that's the reason right there like you have to kind of 
it's scary, especially as a, if you're a beginner, it's scary to kind of take that next step. But if you're not progressing, you know, the, the name of the game is just progressive overload, which is trying to get better over time. And uh, with that, you got to make sure you're eating, you know, a sufficient amount of calories to give you the energy. You can't be necessarily trying to lose a lot of weight and gain a lot of muscle. That's really hard to do, even as a beginner. Uh, maybe in your first day, few years you can, but uh, even then it's kind of hard. So eating somewhere around where you can maintain your weight is the route that I like to go as far as if that's what your goal is to try and build muscle and, and uh, things faster. So that's my preference. Uh, uh, what do you, what do you think, Steven? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head on that one. Um, the name of the game is progressive overload. Uh, like you brought up, if you're doing the same weight for six weeks, you better be doing more reps. You better be doing more sets because that is one of the ways that you can create progressive overload. Um, yes, you want to see the weight go up, and it should go up. Uh, you definitely – there's nothing wrong with wanting to be stronger. Uh, I think whether it be here in lifting or in regular life, it pays to be stronger. It doesn't hurt to be stronger. Um, and with the tracking, like – I can remember a time when I tracked with this. Yes, your brain is a supercomputer in that, but you're going to forget stuff. Uh, I could go week to week, and uh, maybe it was dumbbell presses. I could have sworn I did like 75s the week before, so I did 80s the next week, and I could have forgotten. I probably did 80 or 85 the week before, and now I'm either stagnant or going backwards in that aspect. So uh, tracking is definitely good. Um, to take it in a slightly different direction as far as muscle building and getting stronger, you got to eat. You got to eat. A lot of people, you're scared to eat. Um, I coach probably about 80-something percent women, and sometimes trying to get them to eat is a scary concept because you have societal uh, pressures that say, don't be big, don't be this, don't be that. And, yes, eating will get you big, but eating will get you strong. So if you want to do that, um, and as far as making gains faster, um, eating more doesn't hurt to do that. Uh, I can tell you my lifts are a thousand times better when I'm eating close to three thousand calories than when I'm cutting it to 20, 22 to two thousand. It's those things you have to eat. You can hit the same muscles and attack it every week, but if you're not eating, you're not growing. You're tearing right. that muscle, and it wants to grow, but you're literally what you're eating, if you, especially if you're on the lower end of the caloric spectrum, all you're doing is repairing muscle and hopefully hanging on to what you have. And exactly. while that is great when you're cutting, if for the purposes of this question where, hey, how do I get bigger, Steve? Hey, Fetty, how do I get stronger? Um, eat. Eat. Right. You got to be – you got to put as much work in the kitchen – as you do in the gym because they go hand in hand. I'm not saying you need to go be huge and fat, but a caloric increase. I'm going 80 pounds, right? Right, absolutely, unless, unless, you, unless you're a lifter that wants to go from the 200 to the 280 class really quick. Right. Don't go ahead and throw 80 pounds. But don't be afraid to throw on 5, 10, even 15 pounds. Um, obviously, you don't want to do that in a week, but systematically over a few months – Work your way up to that. Yes, there is some inherent fat gain that will happen, but you can always, once you get to the muscle mass you're looking for, you can always do a mini cut or a full-blown cut, try to maintain that muscle, and then shed that fat. But yeah. to get bigger, you need to eat, and as far as, and that goes hand-in-hand hand with getting stronger because mass moves mass. The bigger your muscles, the more weight you can move. It is plain and simple. So I think if you're looking to make Track your workouts. Make sure there is that progressive overload where you're getting stronger every week and make sure you're eating enough to support that goal, whatever it is. If your goal is to stay at maintenance, you can put on a little muscle at maintenance. I've seen it happen. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but you want to see some good gains. You're going to want to eat. Yeah, I don't know about you. That's something that I'm glad you touched on that, the nutrition aspect of it. It drives me crazy. So – the females I have uh, are generally uh, going the opposite way. That, that we're not going for strength. But the right. males, the male clients that I do have, 
for example, if it's a new male client and they're trying to put on size or, or muscle and whatnot, and I ask them how much they're eating, or even just someone from the gym, you know, how much are you eating? Oh, I'm eating a lot. All right, so what's a lot? Right. Man, I'm eating like, like 4,000 calories. Are you tracking it? No, but I, I, I look at the labels. You know, it's like you're not eating. I guarantee you, you're not eating probably half of that. Um, oh, absolutely. I, I get people all the time say, oh, yeah, I track. I'm like, track? Or do you just kind of plug it in a ballpark? And, you show know, me. Especially, <laughs> here, and here's the, here's the one I notice. Um, male, female, it doesn't really matter. Um, protein. They always overestimate their protein on how much they're eating, and they're never close to where they want to be. I mean, obviously, the general rule of thumb is one to one gram per total body mass just because it's an easy number. And when I get people, if they're at half of that, especially as a new person, I call that a win if they're at half. But oh, yeah. generally speaking, it's you know, 90 grams of fat a day, 300 carbs, and like 40 protein. And I'm like, well – you know, we got we got to switch some things around. So yeah, I mean, the the nutrition part is just as important to getting strong and getting big. I mean, or even when you're, we can touch on in another one. Uh, but you know, that nutrition is going to be very important, and I think it is often overlooked. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll we can leave on this note unless you want to add something. But I always tell clients, friends, people, anyone that's just interested, uh, the general population underestimates how much protein they're getting and overestimates how much carbs and, wait, did I say that right? Yeah, they, oh, no, I said it wrong. They, <laughs> they overestimate. Exactly uh, yeah. they, they definitely underestimate. <laughs> they overest yeah, they overestimate how much protein they're getting in and they, com and they completely underestimate how many fats and carbs they're getting in. Like, you know, what did you, what did you eat today? You know, I had like a, I had a family size pack of Flaming Hot Cheetos and I had, everything else was great though. I had like chicken breast and broccoli. I'm like, yeah, but you had almost a thousand calories in just chips. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had a Chipotle burrito, but don't worry. It only had like 40 grams of carbs. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure did. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you, you got that. You're absolutely right. It had 40. <laughs> yeah. Plus more. Or exactly. Uh, yeah, I think that was so, good for that one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Yeah. So the first question kind of segues really good into our our second question. And I'll let you lead with it, uh, but it's aesthetics and strength, uh, cutting fat while keeping muscle. Uh, what's what's your take on this? So obviously, in this case, we're talking about cutting fat while keeping muscle and not trying to add muscle because that is obviously much, much harder to do. Uh, you can definitely achieve aesthetics and strength. Um, I have quite a few, uh, by industry standards, aesthetic power lifters. Uh, a lot of people think when they think power lifters, they think of somebody like me, 225, not really have abs, not that that's my goal, but some of my girls, that's what they want. You know, they want to look good while lifting heavy. I'm it's sorry, I don't, want, I don't mean to cut you off, but for those of you that don't know what aesthetic means, it means uh, mm -hmm. looking good, having that beach body, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, the musculature that really shows and not just mass, but you can actually the see some definition. You see in the magazines. Exactly. Um, so you can achieve both. Uh, the way I like to tell people to go about it, um, and once again, this kind of goes back to the last one, is do a legitimate bulk phase. You can acquire more mass. The more muscle you have, the better your metabolism will be. It's going to work harder for you because your muscles need that. From there, you want to try to maintain your strength um, not and while you cut down. You do a nice systematic cut to basically peel off those layers that are going to come with a bulk phase. Now, in that, you're going to be looking at aspect is very different. When you're cutting, especially um, depending on how when I prep my people for a meet, when you're, cutting, you're trying to basically maintain as much strength as possible because with a caloric deficit, you're going to struggle with lifts. It's just what it is. You're going to have to back down on weights that were easier at a heavier weight and a higher caloric intake. Um, so at that point, you've now gone through a bulk phase. You've made yourself strong, 
And now you peel back all those layers, kind of like an onion, and then you maintain as much strength as possible. And then from there, once you get to a level that you're happy at, then you work at a maintenance level, and then you rework your strength back up. I find that to be the least frustrating way because people, when they cut, they want to be like, oh, why are my lifts so heavy? Well, that's not our focus right now. Our focus is you want to look great. So that by that means higher rep sets. We're not looking to push one rep maxes or even three rep maxes. You know, you're working, your five rep max in that phase is going to be much more important than your one rep max because you're not going to be chasing that down like you would in a surplus. So by doing that, you take an entire macro plan of bulk to cut, and that way you've touched on both of them and given them both a proper attention. Um, I, I don't know how you feel about that, if that's how you do it, but you know, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, the way I explain it, because it's just more simpler, simple for me, uh, my short answer, you know, everything is going to be dependent on the person and depending on, you know, if they weigh 100, if it's a 130 pound male to start and they want to look aesthetic, it's like, well, we, we got to get our priorities straight and we got to build, we got to build some muscle first because uh, you probably don't have, you're not hanging on to much muscle. So you're not going to have that beach bod you're looking for, you know? Absolutely. So yes and no. And uh, again, this is, this is, I also believe where it's imperative to track your progress uh, and particularly your, your big lifts. Again, uh, your biceps could only grow so much guys. So uh, <laughs> if you, and don't get me wrong, if you want to track your, your bicep progress, you know, I've done it. I do it sometimes. Um, that's fine. But that's, you know, if I miss it, it's, it's not a big deal. Like what I'm tracking mainly is, is my big lifts, my rows, my, my, uh, my deadlifts, my squats, my bench press, things that are going to include a lot, uh, uh, that are going to incorporate a lot more muscle. Um, as you touched on, um, you know, you, you, you're not going to try and do a one rep max, or let's just say it's not smart to try and do a one rep max. <laughs> yeah, it's not, definitely not smart, but people attempt it. Right, right, yeah. Uh, you know, depending on how much you're losing, you're going to get to a point where you are going to lose some strength. Uh, what, what happens for me when, when cutting, what tends to happen is your strength kind of, depending on what lift it is, you'll tend to take a plummet in strength, just out of the blue sometimes and you'll eventually kind of coast for a while and if you are maintaining that body weight then your lifts will start moving back up because your body's not uh eating away at you i guess when you're when you're cutting right absolutely absolutely because usually like you said the main key that I took away from that is maintaining. So when you maintain, your calories tend to come back up a little bit. So therefore, strength comes up, not necessarily in a linear fashion with your calories, but like you said, once you get to that point where you're happy where you're at, then you can start working on strength again. Correct, yeah. And another thing uh, that is very important besides tracking your uh, progress in the, in the weight room with this is uh like protein requirements um i like to stick with if you're in a calorie deficit you're gonna need to be on the higher end um some people will do you know 80 percent. i would say is the minimum uh 80 of your body weight in grams of protein uh, i personally personally like to go for about a gram per pound of body weight and again that's going to depend on the the person whether it's male or female if it's you know if i have a male that weighs 280 pounds i'm not going to necessarily put him on 280 grams of protein because for one that's going to be really hard to digest two that's going to be really expensive and uh and three is probably going to hate life so <laughs> uh, yeah I'm at, I'm at 210 and I, I hate life as it is so when i see people right. complain about i see people complain about 120 i'm like you need to sit down like right yeah yeah that's one of to that <laughs> that's like double chicken at chipotle like get out of here <laughs> yeah calm calm down like 120 is nothing i could eat that at breakfast <laughs> yeah um yeah and then again so that's like for males and then for females depending on 
for females, I, I really like to depend it on what their experience level is. If it's someone new, they just want to lose weight, I go on the lower end. Uh, someone that maybe is hanging on to more muscle or has had some weight lifting or like a, a sports athletic background, then closer to a gram. But again, dependent on what their body weight is. You know, if they're 180, as if it's a 180 pound female, I might not necessarily have her that close to her body weight in grams. So I think, I think like it goes back to what we talked about earlier is generally speaking, whatever we end up putting them on is going to be more than what they were already on. So yeah, I think you're, you're, you're already moving in the right direction, assuming like you said, experience level, especially experience with tracking and nutrition. Um, so you don't necessarily need to go one-to-one uh, especially like you said, with 180, uh, that's, uh, it's a, especially for female, that's a really high oh, wow. end. So, uh, I mean, even for a smaller guy, that's a high end. Right. Right. And it Someone... always, obviously it's going to, it, it, I, I know for me, it definitely depends too on their fat allowance, uh, because you get bored eating really lean meats after a while. Yeah. And it's what so, you, it, exactly. I mean, like, yeah. It's what I you mean, can if you're good at cooking it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, it's what you so, can yeah, stick think, with. If you're at 80% and you're stressing out over not getting a gram of pound per or a, a gram per pound of body weight, like it's it's not that serious. You you're not I mean, I haven't trained any clients that are going to compete for Mr. Olympia or anything, so like <laughs> it's not going to be that serious, you know? Right. Absolutely. I think it's I mean, and you have to look at it too is it's with the FDA allowing a 20% error in nutrition facts, you could hit your macro spot on, but really not even be close because right. of what you ate. I mean, no, like whenever I see, okay, yeah, it's a uh, X amount of fat per so many grams of chicken breast. I'm like, well, not all chicken breasts are created equal. Right. So right. We're going to have a little <laughs> more fat. So you're kind of, it, it's all a guessing game. As far as that goes, you, the goal is just to get into a routine and consistently hit those macros and just let the results show for themselves. Right. All right. I think uh, I think we hit every aspect of that question. Absolutely. Um, so number th so our third question is going to be: Can bodybuilding and powerlifting be done simultaneously? This is a fun one. No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, I get this one a lot from my clients, but no, no, we can we can move on. But okay, so here's why: um, bodybuilding takes dedication, powerlifting takes dedication. Uh, don't half-ass two things because that's all you're going to be able to do. Uh, for example, if any of you are familiar with Leanna Carr. Berto Nunez, uh, there's a few others that I got uh, Jeff Nippard's one of them, Eric Helms. They do not bodybuild and powerlift in the same season or even in the same two years because they understand that to be great at either one takes time. Now, somebody like Berto, what he'll do, or even Eric, Liana, especially, who competed at the Arnold at the Arnold Sports Festival a couple years ago, they take a few years. They hone their crap. Aesthetics is not their main priority because they know you have to maintain at a higher body weight, at a higher body fat. Um, story, because uh, I worked out with Birdo back in California when we, were, when we were out there. He did a, a bodybuilding show six days before he did USAPL Nats. Now, by most people's standards, he did really well at Nat Nats. By his standards, he did awful. He went from 6% body fat at his show to having to lift max effort on a national stage. And he said it was probably one of the worst experiences he's ever had because he was just he did lacking in energy. Oh, yeah, his bodybuilding show was literally six days before okay. USAPL Nats. I thought he, he did the opposite. Okay, wow, yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. He went, he went bodybuilding first and the other way. And this is back like 2012, 2013 maybe. Um, still looks awesome. But she understands it. It takes a couple years. And so what she does is in her growing season, when she takes a few years off of the stage, she power lifts. She gets strong. Powerlifting will add on mass. But short answer um, – 
for me is no, you cannot do both simultaneously. That is not to say you cannot do both because plenty of people have done both, but you cannot do them simultaneously. One has to take a backseat to the other, and this is the takeaway I want you guys to take, at least from my end. Powerlifting requires X amount of surplus calories. Bodybuilding requires X amount of deficit. You see how at the opposite ends here, when you're cutting, don't when you're cutting. well. Absolutely. Right. Talking stage lean, you're talking like 1,200, you know, uh, on the lower end of calories, whereas going into a powerlifting meet, if you're roughly around weight, you're eating, depending on your size, 2,500 to 3,000 calories. So I kind of just want to use that as a why you can't do both at the same time because one requires a huge caloric deficit for stage leanness and one requires a huge caloric surplus to be as strong as possible. So, I mean, I would love to – I know you've done a powerlifting meet, so I'd like to right. hear your thoughts. Yeah, I, um, I I got talked into it. My friend, my friend's gonna be watching it right now. But uh, <laughs> no, it was, we have that effect. We like talking people into doing these. Yeah, things. no, it was it was a great experience, and um, I think we're actually gonna touch on some of that other stuff later. But uh, it was a great experience, and I'm going I agree and disagree with you. So um, absolutely, yeah. When, when so, like, when it's all said and done, you have to pick a goal. So, and we've all been there. You have to pick a goal. You, have, you either got a, if a one rep max is your goal, whether you're going to be competing in a meet or not, that's your goal. If your goal is to, to look shredded on stage or just be very, very lean and, uh, I don't want to say healthier because then people are going to think powerlifting is not healthy, but to, <laughs> to, to have like a, to look more aesthetically pleasing, we'll use that word. There you go. Um, then go that route. That's now in that same breath. That's not to say that you can't do both. And the way I like to work with my clients and I like, and I program myself <laughs> is I like to, uh, work everything around like a big movement, okay? So right, whether absolutely. that's going to be um, squats, leg press. Yes, I said leg press. Uh, <laughs> squats, leg press, um, deadlifts, uh, barbell rows, heavy pull-ups, um, anything that we've continuously been mentioning. Uh, I I work my program around that. So a big movement. And then the, I like to call it fluff work after that. So the, the so do uh, excess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So accessory work, you know, the, the show muscles. And that's Absolutely. not to say those won't help with the, <clears throat> with the big lifts. But if my goal is to look a lot more lean or a lot leaner than I am, or to look good on a vacation or, or whatever, wedding, whatever it is, I know I'm going to be in a deficit. I'm not going to be eating as much food or I'm going to be burning more than I'm, uh, than I'm eating, whether that's through cardio or nutrition. I'm not going to go in there. I'm not going in the gym and I'm not going to go. My, my mentality is not to go set a, a squat PR, like a one rep max. Absolutely. Because I know that I'm probably going to snap myself up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> You know, it's, you might have days where you, you feel like you're, uh, you're in that mind state and you feel good, but it's, it's not the smartest thing. Uh, conversely, what I do like to do is I like to try and get like volume PRs um, or total volume PRs. So, you know, if I, if I went in there and I was benching three sets of eight one day and it felt pretty good, felt fairly easy, maybe I'll try, you know, something as little as three sets of nine the next time and you know, or two thirty for three sets of eight. Like everybody wants to make these big jumps and it seems like, and that's one of the biggest things I took from powerlifting to be honest, it's helped me in bodybuilding so much. It's like everybody wants to make these 25 pound plate jumps every, <laughs> every lift. And it's like, you know, they do it and they fail, they do it and they fail, they do it and they fail. And then that's when we get that conversation. Like, I've, I've tried everything. I don't know why it's not working. It's like, no, like, you, 
use the baby plates, use the donuts, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I think you, you, I want to touch on three things you said that I think you nailed absolutely on the head. One, pick your goal, have a goal. Um, two, I, I like where you went. I think if you're looking to do powerlifting, but you're also wanting that aesthetics. I think aesthetics lends itself to those hypertrophy phases. Whereas, you know, if you're if you have a long enough macro cycle where you're out so far from a meet, you can absolutely do this. So I 100% agree with you on that. That if you're especially those hypertrophy, because you're basically doing bodybuilding stuff anyways, you're just throwing in compound movements. You know, as far right. as rep ranges. Um, but can you explain I, to them really quick, uh, just in short, what a, a macro cycle is. Okay, so a macro cycle is dependent on your time before, say, a meet. Uh, most macro cycles, if there's no meet plan, are like six months, and it depend and how it goes about depends on your skill level. So for somebody who's a beginner, um, since we'll have probably a lot of those uh, here on my end and your end, because I know I have a lot of beginners, um, the first three cycles, three meso cycles or four week blocks that we usually use are hypertrophy work. That is simply to increase work capacity and build muscle because, once again, mass moves mass. So in those phases, working on aesthetics, 100% doable. Now, as you transition into strength phases, um, for these people, you're talking about like two strength blocks roughly uh, if you're talking about a six-month macro cycle and then one peak block. So in those strength cycles, it's much harder to work on aesthetics because recovery is much more important and TDE, which is total daily energy expenditure, is going to be lower because you're just doing less because you can do at 65% of your one rep max, you know, 10, 12 reps, but you're not going to do that at 80, 85. Right. You know, that, that rep range is, you know, lends itself more to two to five. So while you're still getting a lot of work and your overall work tonnage and capacity reduces down and in trying back to, to knowing your goals and <laughs> exactly and like, as you know with, with bodybuilding stuff and i've done in the past bodybuilding training there's a lot of rep work done i mean you're hitting a lot of work um, to tear that muscle to get it to grow and in strength and especially in a peak phase there's just not enough of that to go around so it's one of those now if you want to take a longer one where aesthetics are your goal you know you can run it out to like nine months or longer and then you can really focus on it but once you hit that point of now we're transitioning into strength, it goes back to like you said, knowing your goal and knowing that aesthetics now has to be put on the back burner because we're coming up on trying to push our one rep max or push ourselves into a meet. Right. Yeah, and, and for those of you who, who have, you know, are just maybe new to the gym or, or have not gone, gone through like a – what we like to call a cutting phase diet, you know, I hate using dieting, but dieting phase. Right. Um, you're going to just have to put your ego aside and it's no matter how many years of training you had, it sucks. <laughs> like you're, you're doing 10, 15, some, well, sometimes more percent less weight than you've done in the past. But at the end of the day, you have to remember like what your goal is. If your goal is to look really lean or beach ready or or fit into that wedding dress or, or whatever the scenario is, like you just – and this is men and women. You have to know that you're not going to be able to do as much as you can, which relates to what we spoke about previous. We want to try and maintain as much as we can. So don't get frustrated. Just like ride the wave. <laughs> exactly that's a great way to put it right right the way because you're gonna go it's gonna go up and down and you're gonna have weeks where you feel fantastic and weeks where it, you just you, you feel like you've been kicked around by several people yeah yeah you're like i don't i just did this two days ago what happened oh god yeah the, those days where it's I, i've run in there where i squat heavy on a, like a monday and then Wednesday or Thursday rolls around, like, I got to squat heavy again. Like, <laughs> but you have to ride it out. Um, I think yeah. it's one of those things where everybody – it's where dedication and discipline comes in uh, when motivation is not there. Because yeah. motivation is very fleeting, and I think people need to realize that it's not motivation that gets you results. It is dedication. Right. And, man – I should have t I like <laughs> I should have kind of spoke about this earlier like something that I like to say a lot is like consistency trumps all absolutely 100% like 
you can look at, you know, I've, I go to a commercial gym that I've been going to for years. Like you can, I can look at some of those people and say that th some of them that I've seen since the beginning and say that they have not progressed well, but that's not to say that they don't look better than, you know, judge me or not for saying that they look better, but <laughs> <laughs> that they look better than the general public, you know? Oh yeah. Hi, yeah. I, I get to say Right, right. The, the general public. And that's just because, you know, they might not have an ideal program or their diet might not be ideal, but they've been still going to the gym the past five, ten, ten years or so. So, like, right. consistency over everything. Like you said, those days that you went in, and I think I'm kind of getting off topic, but uh, but consistency, guys. Consist uh, absolutely. I think you just – you hit it right there. It's – you can – outwork bad programming for a while yeah you're gonna get just by being in there compared to somebody who's not going you're going to see better results than they are even right. if your programming sucks because you're getting in there and doing something so i think i think we're good on that one um you know i i think we've kind of i think at the end of it we ended up on the same on the same plane especially when you brought up you know how you do it you know i know my perspective definitely changed some during that but it's you know it comes down to like what you said knowing knowing your goal is first and foremost once you have your goal set you know then stick to it and realize the ups and downs that are kind of come with it